brakes or whatever spring it can down below. So, the audit failure in the private sector also have learning for the public sector. SAI India has takes great pride in reporting on the financial health of the national and state governments. So it, that's why independently and impartially we we'll have to ensure that thing, that this kind of creative accounting or that window dressing does not take place. Not only we see the accounts, we also see the sustainability. How the finances are sustainable under the FRBM Act, how the debt is as a position is there, how it is sustainable or not sustainable, that auditors will be at the Currently, you must, be, you must have heard about a lot of schemes which are, you know, so-called freebies and kind of a thing, whether they are sustainable or not sustainable, what kind of things are happening, the sustainability part also we will be seeing. How the states are performing, whether they, their debts are sustainable or they will have a vicious circle very squeaky. But uh, in spite of all these things, what I said about the audit, how the, we do it, we also do so many other audits because you have expanded ourselves since 2007. Apart from the financial audit, now we are doing the performance auditors. So that looks about the compliances, about rules, regulations, policies, plus the performance. The performance is very important because Mostly you will find there will be inefficiencies, particularly the performance service looks at the economy efficiency and effectiveness of the schemes. Mm -hmm. How economically the schemes or the programs have been designed, how economically it is being implemented, how efficiently it is being implemented, and what is the effect output and outcome. Of course, it is very difficult to judge the outcome, but that is also we we'll have to we we are doing it. So the economy efficiency and effectiveness is a part of our audit. That is where we see mostly the cost overrun, time overrun. The projects which have to be completed in certain period of time and certain amount, sometimes it oversuits. That is a huge cost to the exchequer as well as to the public as well as the country. There is a loss of opportunity costs, that kind of issues are there, whichever could have been done in a particular amount, that is now in a locked in a particular one project because of the delays. So that is also an onerous duty. So here also you require that kind of an due diligence, understanding. That's why I always advise our people to know the activities. Auditors should not know only the numbers and the uh, a methodologies to audit, they should understand the organization. What kind of organization, what is the scheme, what is the core in that, what is the no, basic intent of the scheme and the policy of the government. What is the cabinet's decision, what kind of things you do, particular the intention. So unless you evaluate that thing, under, unless you understand that one, you cannot evaluate properly. If you don't know the schemes, we have thousands of schemes. That's why one has to go through that. So it is a continuous process to educate oneself. Everyone has to go through. We have a number of uh, training centers and professional courses. It goes on like that. Abroad, you know, here also we, we are doing it. Because unless it is, you know, upgrade yourself, you cannot do that. So in any organization, in even the educational field, one has to upgrade. One has to every day upgrade oneself about the developments and the things which you are doing. It. Just it cannot be taken for granted because you understand certain things from the audit point of view. Otherwise, you suffer from some kind of biases. Then the ethical issues come. The biases can come from the personal biases, from the, from the experiences, from the past precedences. You think that sometimes the auditors and others, they think that this used to happen like this. The earlier things have happened like this. So they go by that. So this, that carries certain kind of biases. That is the major challenge. Apart from values are well known, the rules are well known, everything is well known. But if you go by that values, that kind of experiences, then you have an, this kind of problem. So one has to be 
the above that kind of thing one has to see what is objectively fairly whether it is a privately or in the public sector or even the auditors they have to be there they have to be objective and fair uh, in this thing that kind of challenges we have also there so we are also grappling with that kind of issues so these kind of things sometimes people think about the audit is only like an fault finding it is not fault finding it is to find out the way how the course can be corrected that's why everyone has to see when whether you are a student whatever you are studying you should see what you are studying and what you are preparing you should continuously correct it so internal you know internally you have to so evaluate it so that you know that you are fairly sure about that so like that in the audit it is much more it is required many organizations have their system of concurrent audit and internal audit wherever the internal audit is good wherever the internal or the concurrent audit system is there these kind of issues are minimum otherwise you will have to grapple with this kind of things also so there comes the bias also as i said when you use the technology blindly then there will be bias so this again is an ethical issue so i think i will not talk of more about this thing because we have different system to check it on that we have got audit advisory board they are eminent people from outside they advise us from time to time also we have a stakeholders meeting we have started celebrating our audit day and as you know i must be knowing that our institution is very old 162 years in 1860s 61 it was the first controller and auditor general general was appointed it is when the government of india act came in 1857 and 1860 it was all the accounts of three presidents in bengal madras and the bombay presidency that was brought to delhi and that that how it became a controller of the general of india in that also we have some kind of citizens engagement globally also we are now engaging with various groups parallel to the government system we have also the brics sanghai cooperation organization g20 we have sai 20 also other regional groupings we have almost seven such regional groupings like the europe in the pro asians in the latin american european asian so we have so much of this exchange of knowledge so how this public in the domain where various stakeholders are taken into you know in our audit system so that we get the feedback that is also it is going on so we know and you must be aware of the social audit how the social audit is also complement and supplement the audit that is also another area we are talking about now so as you must be knowing i was discussing outside then now in the civil service at exam also the ethics is one of the topics ethics is part of that so every year now the universities also now ah they are having this kind of centers it is very glad to know that here also you have a center for ethics ethics has become an <laughs> over thing in fact as a civil servants we are batchmate actually <laughs> so in globally we also used to go for the ethics somewhere in california and the university of california i had gone for some time for the ethics also so we also learn about the ethics how even the ethics is valuable so that's that's why i just would like to conclude because i would not like to have you know this discussion on and on the our basic motto of supreme audit institution we call that lok hitat satyanistha for the public purposes we all do this thing and that's why we are have a lot of responsibility morally ethically legally and we should be always following that thing and being all here students you are pursuing various courses and degrees 
in your education also in your studies also you are you should have an ethics because the ethics needs leadership it needs the values it is not that it will be handed upon you know from the up ethics can be learned from the family family values the societal values in the your institutional leadership whosoever can give the leadership because it is by example you have to live in throughout your life it is not that when you come to the certain position only you the ethics is important whether in the private and public sector but ethics is everywhere it is important ethics will see you through all your thick and thin that's why ethics cannot be overlooked moral cannot be overlooked it can have certain interpretation certain kind of values that's why I initially i said it is a civilizational hallmark it is the civilizational stamp how a society how a community how a state how a nation is you know you know administered or governed it is it lies in that so it has to be everywhere so ethics is very core to everything whether you are in a public functionary, private functionary, or a private individual, a private entrepreneur, without ethics, it is you will not see you throw. So with these words, I wish you all the best. Thank you.